Do you, do you guys see anything different? Anything anything extra on my hand? <laughs> <laughs> it's official. We are married and uh, everything went really, really awesome. The wedding was incredible. It rained a little in the morning, but then the light was perfect. I cannot wait to see the photos. It was just absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna do a whole video on it because we built everything. I mean, from pasture land to venue, we built it all. The family and I and Katie and all of us. It was just, it was a big group effort and it came out amazing. So we just got back to Florida and uh, of course, right when we get back, Hurricane Ian is coming and blowing through. Luckily, we are totally fine where I am uh, in around Tampa area. It turned just south, so we were totally fine. Unfortunately, a bunch of people south of Florida got really, really messed up. So right now, as of this video, I'm doing 50% of all of my sales on my website to help out for Hurricane Ian. So if whatever you guys buy on the website, anything you buy on the website, 50% of the sales at this point in time will go to the relief efforts. So all your support is greatly appreciated. But for this video, I wanted to do just a quick, quick, cool, creative edit. A lot of you probably know it as double exposure or multi-exposure, and you can do this in camera, but this I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop using two photos. So let's get started. Will Simpson here and welcome back to Exploring Photography. It's great to see you again, glad you're back and uh, let's get right into it. Don't, uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. But anyways, let's get into it. All right, so basically we're gonna be taking this photo and this photo and turning it into this photo. Now it's nothing crazy, but it's a little creative. So let's just go into it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two photos, we're gonna drag them into Photoshop. Gonna make this one a little bit bigger, drag it down and get it sized right for what I want to do. Perfect, just like that. Then we're gonna take this photo, we're gonna make it really big and size it up. I think even bigger, there we go. Yeah, just to about there and press enter. Okay, good, now that we got the two photos, we're gonna go over here and turn off this layer. Now, really quick, if you are unfamiliar with Photoshop, I'm not gonna go over all the tools that I'm using, but I do have several Photoshop basic videos that if you get lost in this video, I will um, link them in the description of this video for you to go watch and then you can come back to this video. But everything I'm using, I have done tutorials on very basics of them, so it should be totally fine. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna turn this layer off. We're gonna click this one here and we're gonna go to filter. We're gonna go to camera raw filter and we're just gonna turn it black and white. So go to monochrome. Then we're gonna just make a few adjustments, deepen the blacks a little, up the contrast, raise the whites and just add a little bit more pop to the image. Press okay. Good, now that we got that black and white, we're gonna right click on it and we're going to rasterize this layer. Basically makes it a basic layer, not a smart layer. So now you'll notice that the adjustments from the camera raw are gone. Uh, so then we're gonna go right click here, click solid color, and we're just gonna make a white solid color and we're gonna drag the portrait on top. Then after that, we're going to press W on the keyboard for quick select, we're gonna press select subject. Okay, good, it's gonna give us a rough selection. We're gonna press L on the keyboard for the lasso. And we're gonna push and hold the Alt or Option key depending on Mac or PC. And we're going to make our selection a little bit cleaner here. Get rid of this extra stuff. Good, and then I think I'm gonna take off this part of her hair here. Good, okay, good. And then once that's done, we're gonna click the mask button with our selection. Perfect, so there we have that. Then because you see how it's kind of choppy, we're just gonna take a brush, B on the keyboard, and with black as the foreground color and 100% opacity, we're just gonna kind of smooth this out a little. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're making this kind of, we're blending this with the other layer. So we just want to make it look like we didn't make a really bad selection. <laughs> so good, we're just gonna smooth this out a little. And with this technique, you can go a lot deeper. This is just a very simple version of it. There we go, perfect. So that looks good to me. So then we're gonna turn on this layer here. Now this looks no good. So we're gonna turn this into screen mode, right? Good. So then the yellow is awful. I hate the yellow. So we're gonna go into image adjustments and we're going to go into hue saturation. Then we're gonna select yellows instead of master and we're just gonna drop the saturation. See how it pulls all that yellow out? Beautiful, love it. 
Good, and then we're gonna go to greens because I want the green to pop, but I don't want it to be overly poppy. So we're gonna lower this down so we just have muted greens. We're gonna darken it, give it a little bit less luminance, bring back some of the little saturation. Perfect, good, now we're looking really, really nice. Okay, good, press okay. And again, we're gonna rasterize this layer. And now I want to select the portrait copy, press Command or Control J, make a copy of it, and then slide it up. So now that we have this layer on top, we're gonna to use this to fill in the details. So we're gonna bring back the trees now. So we're gonna take this 50%, make black the foreground color, and we're just gonna bring back the trees here, you see? Just like this. Bring back the trees, bring back that second layer as best we can, good just like that. Now we're going to then bring this up to about 79%, press X on the keyboard and bring back like her eyes, get some details of her eyes. Get this, get the details back of the image, really make the image pop. That's too much, wow, that's way too much. Good, so let's lower that back down to about 30%, 40%. Bring back some of this detail of her hair so it doesn't look weird or anything like that. Bring back a little bit more detail here. Good. Yeah, it's looking nice. And then we're gonna definitely bring back the jawline a little bit more. Beautiful, look at that. Okay, good. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the trees look a little bit more poppy. So we're gonna click on the trees. We're gonna go to adjustments again, curves, and then we're just gonna adjust the curves of the trees, make them really kind of stand out a little. You see how it, you can adjust them? just by adjusting the lightness. Yeah, there we go, good. Too much, excellent. Good, that looks great. And then I think I'm actually gonna make this layer bigger. Want the tree to kind of go through her eye a little bit. There we go. Good, and then I think I'm gonna remove it a little bit from her hair. So let's lower the opacity here. Oops, what is going on? Remove it a little bit from the hair just so we get the texture and then we just have the tree there. And there you have it. That was quick, that was easy, and it's a creative and a unique look that you can quickly do in Photoshop. So obviously it's a little different than where we started, but you know what, it's always gonna be a little bit different and that's okay because this process is a creative one and you can get as creative as you want. So anyways, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, try to get to 10,000 by the end of the year, so love to have you along. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. But at this point, we are done. Go check out this video here and I will see you in the next video.